uh, <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a beast. So I'm gonna do. Um, let me close my door a little bit. So a lot of people were asking about um, the the Try Hard Ninja cover that I did, uh, specifically the the 3D elements, and they're 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 not accurate 3D at all. This is just a very um, kind of do-it-yourself, stylized, uh, illustrated type of, of 3D, and they don't. Um, Real 3D objects would not bend like this, <laughs> so. Uh, but I needed to before I start a tutorial on, on on the 3D elements. What would you rather see? Would you rather see the text uh, tutorial on on how that was kind of rendered in 3D, or would you rather see something like the this uh, this heart element over here um, and do more of um, kind of like a, a, a an 8-bit 3D thing? So I'm gonna show you just regular. Um, point perspective first and then we'll uh, I'll, I'll try and do redo one of these and, and show you just kinda like how it was done in a process I use for it so I'll give that give that a minute because I know the stream is is delayed a second okay I got a couple votes for the text I'm glad to see everybody coming out for the stream that didn't sound right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, tech. Okay, everybody's saying I got I got what five or six votes for text, one heart. Um, once I show you that the the thing with the text is for CS6, I'm going to show you how to keep it really um, sharp by by converting it to a shape. And um, oh, thank you, Phil. Uh, so maybe that that might be a better you might learn a little more from it because once I do the perspective part you can uh, you can apply that to pretty much any type of of, uh, of design so let's jump right in let's do let's see let me zoom in so essentially what we got going on here is the text is uh, it, it let's see the word in is a better example the word in has two point perspective which means it's got two directions or two axes that it's it's vanishing on and it's going backwards on the uh, that'd be what the z-axis which is what we're showing with the uh, with the angles here with the the, the drop the fall off um, but the actual words are actually if you imagine it they're kind of going if you can see my cursor they're kind of going this way so there's another second perspective point way off to the left of of the of the text here so let me show you something real quick we can get just sketch up what I'm talking about here get my brush going I'm using a tablet but you can definitely uh, do a mouse with all this so what is perspective okay so what I like to do is draw out a couple points make sure everything's set here so say I've got two perspective points right vanishing point yeah vanishing point is the direction that the element is uh, disappearing into like um, uh, actual 3d is um, multiple vanishing points but a way to do a way to draw this would be if we have a uh, if we want to do a square, let me make sure I'm doing this right. This is a very extreme vanishing point, but if I do something like that, then there'd be another line down there. So our our square for this or cube, sorry. This is extremely rough, but you get the point. That's a two two point perspective. So we just did a cube that is disappearing into two vanishing points. 
Uh, let me draw it again and at, a, at an easier to see perspective. So if I do my vanishing points further apart, and you know, imagine imagine wherever you want to put a horizon line to draw out from your points. That was a bad bad line. So the y-axis is straight up and down. Now you can actually apply a third vanishing point um, to the y-axis, and I'll show you that in a second. There's that Adobe pressure bug. Thank you, Adobe. Still haven't fixed that after all these years. That one was pretty off because my lines aren't straight, but now if we fade this out a little more and go on top, Okay. That is two point perspective. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's very rough. I've had a lot of coffee and I'm very shaky. But um, that is basic two point perspective. And that's kind of what we did. That's what we mimicked for the text here, um, but just with some some added effects. So let me show you three-point perspective. See, so remember how to do this. I haven't done this since high school, to be honest. So three-point perspective is we would have. Let's see if I remember how to do this. We have our three points. See, I need another. I did that wrong. Need another top here. So this would go this way. Like that. So now we have the y-axis has is, is got a vanishing point you know, towards the bottom. Then we have the x and z-axis going off to either side. So that is three-point perspective. Now single-point perspective is, is you know, just the one. We jump straight to two. So let me do that just to uh, single point. And then you just kind of draw whatever shape you want and then just everything falls off into one perspective type thing right so that's essentially a little little closer to what we did uh, for here within real life text so once you get kind of an idea of how perspective works um, and it's really you just want to make sure all your your lines and your your, your the, the third dimension of whatever you're trying to draw is, is vanishing into one of those points. Um, so let's jump into text and I'll show you how I did it with text. Let me pause here first to make sure. Um, is there any questions about, about that? It was awfully quick. Um, I want to make sure that, uh, that whoever's really interested got it. <laughs> Good to go. All right. So the text. Let's see. I'll use the same font. I use a paid font as I spit all over my tablet um, for uh, for Try Our Ninja. I used a paid font called Burbank, and I think I use Burbank Big Condensed. So let's type out uh, some text and Phil, you're a guinea pig. I'm gonna type out. Fill. All right. So let me just get this situated. It's easier to use kind of a bold type style. All 
Okay. Now, one of the first things I did to the text um, was I converted it to a shape. Now, in CS6, you can do this. I don't remember what version this actually got introduced in, but um, if, you, if you have your, your text there, when you convert something into a shape, it, it retains that vector, um, those vector elements. And hold on one sec. I'll be right back. Hold on one sec, guys. My wife needs my truck key, and of course I can't find it. There it is. Okay. We're back. <laughs> so, if you have your text um, laid out, and you want to give yourself plenty of kind of space to work with, so when I first... Uh, when I first did the, let me show you the other, uh, I, I kind of, we're going to open the, the first um, cover I did for Triad Ninja for the single. Uh, let's see, I got everything buried, okay, so. So when we convert to a shape, I don't know if you can see this all too clearly, but um, see how the, the we can we can put the text on an angle and keep these real sharp edges. And so when we when we apply a, uh, an outline or a stroke to the element, if you if you use just the regular layer effects um, option, you get the 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 corners get rounded, and as as the stroke gets gets wider you just start getting these rounded corners that just look bad if you're if you're not trying to do that <laughs> so if we keep the uh, close this if we keep the text a shape we can retain that so I'm just gonna right click on the text layer and go to convert to shape and I'm using a PC same thing on a Mac you should be able to see the same option so convert to shape all right, now I want to get my text kind of ready. So let's go ahead and go to the shape tool. And now that it sees this as a shape, I can apply things to it up here at the top. So the fill, um, fill for fill, <laughs> let's change it to, uh, let's do a green for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a stroke or outline. And let's go with a Let's go with a dark green. Let's do something like, let's do the yellow. All right. Um, now we're gonna change this all in a minute, but this will help you see what we're doing. For the stroke as well, if you, uh, up at the top you have an alignment uh, option. We wanna make sure that the stroke is on the outside. That's how I did this. And then, I'm gonna bump this up to six point. Let's do four. I'm. I've got a document open. It's at 1,800 pixels wide by 1,800 pixels tall, and it's at 300. Um, what is it? PPI or I'm, I'm used to DPI for print, but um, let's see. Image image size. Resolution is pixels per inch. I'm used to dots per inch for printing. Okay, so let's go ahead and mimic a, um, a perspective to this. And the, the easiest way to do that is simply go to Edit, Transform Path, and we're going to go to Distort. Okay, so now 
Remember that perspective thing we did in the beginning? Now I can kind of mimic a two-point or three-point perspective just by using the distort tool. So I'm not having to actually draw out all the lines. I'm just going to get this in a way where it looks like it's got uh, some, some dimensionality. So hit return. Now we've got our text set, right? So now let's do the fall off. So let's go ahead and create a new layer below our text. And we're going to draw out just a, a point where we want everything to, to vanish off to. Okay. So let's do it back here. All right. So I'm just going to draw a point so I have this just as a, a visual reference on its own layer because I'm going to delete it later on. So I'm going to create a layer above this. And for the, uh, the cover, I just drew lines. I just if you hold shift and you can use your your tablet and it'll it'll draw straight lines for the most part. Um, but if you're using a mouse, I'm going to show you the best method for that. So I'm going to go back to my shape tool and grab the line tool. Now, let's make sure I'm going to drag one out and just make sure it's a width that I like. I'm going to knock this down to uh, 3 pixels. I don't want a stroke on it and the fill can be let's do uh, let's keep the green for now okay so now what we want to do remember the corners of the cube how we had how we dragged um, or drew lines from each each cube corner off to the vanishing points and is that making my webcam go nuts okay no. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do the same thing for every edge or every part of the text that visually makes sense to, to drag off into a vanishing point. Um, I'd say every corner, but sometimes it's not. For, for example, when we get to the top of the P here, we're going to have to kind of just eyeball it and see if we can come close. So this is where you just start. You would just create a, uh, create a line, right? And let's go to our farthest our furthest point for now, which would be kind of down by this L. All right, so I'm just going to let off there. Now, instead of just dragging out lines constantly, if you just simply hit Control J, and we've created a duplicate layer of this line, Control T, and now we have just a, a duplicate um, line element that we're then going to um, edit. So since our our are like pointing at this and you can't see it. Um, since we're going to be rotating on this upper left hand corner, you can just simply drag our rotation point up to the corner and that way they'll all be ending in the same spot. So I do a lot of crazy hand gestures. So now let's just simply rotate this new line up to wherever we want it. All right? Say the top of the L. Because that's going to that's going to vanish as well. Now I like to go ahead and just get as many lines ready as possible because we're going to go through and just either mask out or erase um, a lot of the ones we don't need or, or where you won't see them. Um, but I'm just going to keep going through this process. Control J, Control T, move my rotation point off to the corner. And let's go ahead and you can see the bottom of this H. We, we'd be able to see perspective there. So I'm going to create a perspective there. Control J, Control T, same thing. Bottom of the P here. All right. Now I'm not doing the other edge of the of the P down here because we can't see anything behind it. So I'm only doing the parts that you can that that we're going to be able to see and have to um, have to apply a, a three dimension to it. So let me go ahead and. A few of these lines, we're not going to need their their uh, the the I don't know what to call it. Um, where it overlaps the rest of the letters, where it overlaps the P, like say this line for the bottom of the H, we're not going to see it out here because if you imagine on a 3D edge, let me go ahead and get that ready for the top of the P here. Okay, that corner. So there's going to be a 3D edge here. Um, 
See like the in? See how there's the this whole element here is blocked in with color? So we don't actually see like the back side of the in here, right? We only see a few of the edges on the top. We don't see anything on the bottom because our perspective doesn't um, doesn't give us any view of those sides. So it's pretty much we're just seeing the two, the top and left side of the of the the word here. So we're kind of going to get the same thing here, but we're going to see like the bottom of this H, you know, maybe the interior of the H and the top of the L, and that's it. So we don't have to worry about anything else um, for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and that line that we have for the H, I'm going to right click and rasterize layer. And just for, for timing, I'm just simply going to delete out or just erase that part I don't need. And I can go ahead and erase the overlap here. I want to make sure that my eraser tool, though, that I'm using is set to 100% uh, set to hardness. Okay. So, see that? We're going to do the same thing to that L, the top of the L. So I don't need the rest of this line, just need enough to give me the top of that L. Let's go ahead and that's our point. I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this line layer, which is the top of the L, and get rid of the overlap up here. So you can see we're starting to get a 3D um, look going. So you don't want to rasterize all your shape lines yet because we're still going to make duplicates of some. So this line though, I'm going to go ahead and rasterize that layer. And that's the top of the P because I don't need the overlap down here. And you notice for now I'm, I'm, just, I'm just erasing what I can see. I'm not, I'm not bothering to actually uh, hide the text and go in and really clean it up because there's, there's another easy way to do that. So I'm going to create a new copy this other line and find what other edge we're going to see. So the top of the I, let's see. And you don't have to do all of them if you don't think you're going to going to see them. See how those lines are going to get real close together, the top of the H and the top of the I? I'm just going to do the top of the H for now and see how that looks. Because again, this isn't true 3D. We're just mimicking a, a 3D look just to give it some style. Now I need this other column of the H. And remember, control J, control T. And the top of this column, control J, control T. And the top of this column. It looks like we will see the interior of the H, though. So control J, control T. We're going to see this little tiny bit down here. And you just kind of keep going around until you see that everything is covered. J, T. And down in here, I'm getting that very bottom right column of the H. Okay, let me get all of these pretty much done because our last one is going to be that that curve on the P which that's where it gets a little bit more tricky so let's just uh, clean up what we got now while I'm doing this when I when I go through the entire um, design like I did for for the cover you kinda wanna keep in mind um, either write stuff down or uh, if you got a if you got a good memory, unlike me, <laughs> um, you want to remember kind of like the the stroke widths that you're using. You know how many pixels in width, because when you jump from word to word to word, it, if if you don't keep it consistent, it starts. You know the whole piece doesn't look like it flows together as well. So if you're if you're doing like the shape tool, like we're using here, just remember. Um, you know how many pixels wide these shapes are and keep stuff like that in the back of your mind and written down if you have to uh, 
some of this stuff, you know, like, like layer effects, it's really easy just to copy it and apply it to another element. But for stuff when you get into these type of things, um, it's good to remember that stuff. All right. Now we have this one other line. Okay. I haven't rasterized that one yet because I'm going to make a copy of it. Control J, Control T. Or actually, I'm just going to hide it. I think I just copied the wrong one. Control J, hide this. I'm going to rasterize this layer. And it is kind of a tedious process, but uh, once you get going and, and learn how to do this stuff, it's kind of fun. You end up applying this to all sorts of other stuff, which is fun, like those hearts. Okay, so the top of the P. This is kind of where you got to just kind of eyeball. Um, and by eyeball, I mean just kind of... <laughs> There's no accuracy to it except what your eye tells you. So if you're me, sometimes it's off. But see the top of the curve of this P? Um, you just kind of want to overlap where it ends. All right. And it, if you're doing a lot of curves and curve letters, it, it does get a little bit tricky. So I think there's about good. Let's go ahead and return, enter that. That looks good. It's right at the turn and it's going to our vanishing point. So I'm going to rasterize that layer and let's get rid of the excess. And there we go. We have pretty much every line that we're going to need to work with on this. And it looks like we will see some more of the top of the eye. So I need to go back and I'm going to create one more line. And I rasterized everything, but they're so close that I don't think this one's really going to matter all that much. When you have your resolution up pretty tall, um, you, the the pixel blur isn't really all that noticeable so there we go so Phil is in 3D with a three point perspective basically because we have um, we have a perspective line going off to our, our X or Z axis I'm going to call this the X um, you know across, across the face of the letters is, is the X axis we have another vanishing point going backwards on the z-axis from and we do actually have a little bit of a perspective as you can see you know because the, the the l and the i and the h isn't at a 90 degree angle it's you know there's another there's another perspective point um, you know way down here somewhere so we got one way over here and we have our three point perspective um, if I were to actually draw lines off to these perspective though, these perspective or vanishing points, sorry, you know, these lines would be way off the canvas. So you don't need to actually go through and, and do that. Um, in art school, they have you do that. They have you do it on real big paper. So you have your, uh, you can draw your vanishing points and you, you know, you get out the, the yardstick and <laughs> you know, try to do skyscrapers and things like that. There's also there's also a name for all the angles and views. Like if we did a three point perspective where we were below, that's that's called worm's eye view. And if we did a perspective where it's way up here at the top, that's bird's eye view. And this is more of a straight on, um, I guess, three quarter type view. So let's go ahead and let's select all our lines and let's. Except I don't want the point. Actually, now I can get rid of the point. Knock on wood. I hope I don't need that again. So I'm going to select all my lines and press Control E. I'm going to, excuse me, go ahead and merge those. Okay, so I'm going to make a copy of the fill, the, the text layer. Control J. I'm going to right click. I'm going to rasterize that layer. Okay. I'm going to hold Control and make a selection of that and simply go to select modify uh, do I want expand or contract I think I want contract and I'm going to contract it in just a couple of pixels because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the the excess of these lines but I want I want there to be some some connecting right if that makes any sense let me let me show you if I were to to not contract these zoom way in here and I want to delete. I want to delete, um, you know, these lines that are behind the letters. So, if I delete them here, 
Photoshop will create a little bitty gap in between my uh, my text and my line. So I need to contract the selection just a hair so there's a little bit of an overlap. And since my, my lines are about four pixels wide, um, if I select modify, and I think it's contract for now, it might be expand two pixels. Okay, see? Now if I delete, if I press the, the delete key, see that? Now I've got all my lines should be should be ending right at the text. So now if I go back to the, the copy of the text layer I made and go to give it a layer effect of a stroke, right? Let me bring this down on the right screen. So let's match the same color green. Okay. Let's position the stroke on the inside and give it the same width. Remember we were trying to remember that width that we had for the lines? It was four, I think. <laughs> um, and this is, hold on one sec, this is looking kind of iffy. Okay, something, it looks like we have gaps in our lettering from the shape stroke. So let's put, quick fix is to take the position and put it on the outside. Let's try center. Okay, let's do that for now. Then we're going to actually go in and erase the parts we don't need. So I'm going to hit. So the other thing I did was for the blend options, advanced blending down here, I turned the fill opacity down to zero. Okay, see how we, we got rid of that? So I'm going to go ahead and. Well, there's still some. We're just going to have to erase more uh, inside. Make sure we don't have any crazy overlaps. Sometimes Photoshop, man, it does some stuff that just I don't understand it. Um, hit OK, return, or right click, rasterize layer. All right, let's zoom in. And let's just use our eraser tool and get rid of these extra gaps that Photoshop then went in and put a outline around them. That was easy enough. All right. So we basically have a 3D wireframe of this text. Now, to just uh, create some further depth, um, if we simply take the stroke uh, text layer, right, and then press Control and select your um, your, your your vanishing lines, Control E. We just we've merged that into a layer. Now let's use our magic wand tool and select outside of it, right? Select, modify. This time expand. We want to expand a couple of pixels. Okay. Select inverse, right? So we're now we're selecting the entire, um, you know, the entire uh, text element. My brain is starting to shut off. Okay. Let's create a new layer right above the background, right below, basically below everything. So a new layer. And let's turn on our gradient tool. Let's pick some colors. So let's go from a darker green, right? Darker green, maybe like that. And you want the opacity all the way up to maybe a, a same green or a little bit lighter. Okay, now let's drag a gradient towards our vanishing point. Let's start from maybe the middle of the H and see how this looks, and we'll just drag it towards the tail out here. Ooh, that's looking cool. All right. And there we go. That's looking pretty close. Now, the other effects that you can do is to give it a little more depth, um, is to grab some areas to use the, the burn tool on. So maybe we should use the burn tool on the interior sections here. So I think we can get away with the magic wand tool for now. All right, so let's, yeah, we'll just, we're just gonna use the magic wand tool for now. Let's grab these areas that are kind of inside. 
See that? Select, modify, expand, two pixels. Go back to our gradient layer and let's grab that burn tool. I like the burn tool. And let's just kind of apply some shadow. Make it make it look like there's some shadow going on in there. And do right there. Make sure I'm not hitting everything else. Ah, that's looking pretty cool. Now, if you want to go one step further, the, the effects I did on the Trier Ninja one was I simply, on our text layer, I held control, and that selects the original text without the stroke, okay? So you can create a new layer, and let's do kind of a white fade. Go back to our gradient tool, and now we have you know, a gradient picked where it's gonna go from opaque to transparent, and I've just got white selected. And then we created a new layer, so I'm just going to kind of drag downwards and give that a little bit of depth. It's looking cool. Another thing I did was just some subtle highlights. So create a new layer, and then I'm just using the pen tool, and you can just kind of draw where you'd imagine light to fall on the, the face of the letters. So kind of like... Like so, as you're imagining, our, our light source would for this is in the upper left. So I'm just kind of drawing some highlights, and that's really about it. Yep. So that's that's 3D text mimicking three vanishing points or three point perspective, and it gets really interesting, like we did for the cover here. Uh, you know, when you when you draw in more text, but you just change the vanishing point. So, I just stacked the letters basically, and each one I did the same process, but in the